the chopper. And some of its parts did not pass the test. The uh, chain drive shaft there died many times. And then I welded it back together very crustily in a barn. So that's the main goal is rebuild that much stronger. So instead of that inch and a quarter hex, I have some two inch solid bar round. I'm gonna probably bore out the middle of it a little bit, but I have that. And then to go with that, I have this enormous bearing that'll fit this whole diameter. Well, apparently that last weld uh, was pretty strong. There is now rubber everywhere. I was attempting to accomplish two goals. One, break the drive shaft. Uh, that didn't work, but I did shave down the tire a little bit. Destruction. Indeed. I need something that's gonna go right up against this bearing. It needs to hold it together. Basically, I wanna make it so this whole piece can just go and slide straight out this way. Now that I have a much better lathe um, and with the new design that I'm doing, I think it'll be a lot straighter this time around. There we go. <laughs> Gotta love just unceremoniously lopping off hours of work. It actually really doesn't bother me. I like improving things. Always make it better. Break it so that you can fix it better. Five thirty X ring chain. Cool. It's O ring sealed or X ring, as the case may be. It's not just tractor chain, so it'll be quieter, it won't overheat, and uh, it'll look better. Got the little alignment pin, a taper for the weld. I can't believe it took this long to get a decent lathe. This thing is so much better than the old one. And I can just take off so much more material at a time and, and I can trust that it's not that it's gonna stay accurate. Hmm, very nice, very nice. After much welding, you can see it's a little bit wibbly wobbly. Not totally horrendous, all things considered, but I need it to be really close because this is only about two thirds of a millimeter larger in diameter than it needs to be for the bearing. Basically, I've been welding on one side trying to get it to warp in the direction I want it to. 
because my theory is the colder it is to start with when you heat it up and then let it and add some weld and let it cool it'll shrink more if the whole thing is colder i don't know if that's true or not Got this all welded up and straight enough that I was able to turn it down to roughly the bearing size. It's still a little bit tight right now. Um, oh no, actually, now that everything's cold. <laughs> when it was hot, it didn't quite uh, fit. Anyway, and then I turned down the welded section just to make it all nice and smooth because obviously all the strength of the weld is in that big V. Also, I made this. Oh, that's cool. Out of some aluminum that goes there. Like that. Well, where I'm at is this piece of stock that I chose for bearing housing is extremely hardened. I'm not sure what it is. My best guess is it was supposed to be a bushing for some big piece of machinery. Uh, but it is very, very hard, so I'm having trouble turning it. Yeah, I mess, messed around with a bunch of different cutters and stuff, and um, then I slowed it down a whole bunch, so it's not getting as much heat into it, and that's working a lot better. And I just have to do it manually, because even the slowest feed rate is a little fast for how hard this is. While we're waiting on some parts for the chopper, I'm gonna go ahead and get some work done on the Humvee because we just got a super exciting new tool in the shop. We've got the PCS 250 powder coating system from Eastwood and the benchtop powder coating oven. So I'm gonna mess around with some powder coating and take a few of the parts that I've built for that and get them all coated up so they don't rust for once. I mean, we've gotten things powder coated, but I've never done it myself. With this little oven here, we'll be able to do the whole process here in the shop for all of our little small parts. The hardest part of this whole powder coating endeavor is just gonna be getting these engine mounts out. If only we'd have this set up a few weeks ago when I did these engine mounts. Now, uh, time to clean them up a bit. Prep is the most important step. That's super easy. So you got your button, you send voltage through the wire so that the powder coat will stick, and then you got your powder coating gun. So you hold that down. Oh, that's satisfying. all that powder down in all the crevices in there. Check it every couple minutes and until it's all glossed over. And then um, we set a timer for 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, then it's done. Oh, they're looking pretty good. Look, you can see in there they've kind of glossed over a little bit. Means we let them go for 20 minutes from now on, and then they'll be done. Eastwood has hundreds of colors of powder to choose from. The PCS250 has two voltage settings. It's got 15,000 volts and 25,000 volt settings. 
And you know, it's just that easy. You just spray it on, bake it for 20 minutes, and your parts are done. How cool is that? Super easy. Also, I was genuinely shocked at how affordable the system is. Right now, Eastwood is offering this PCS 250, a powder coating oven for a special price. So click the link in the description and start powder coating today. And just like that, while well, we have lunch, let them cool. Look at that. Powder coated parts. Got a little bit of texture to it and it's kind of like black with like a silverish accent. Super nice. Look at that. I've never made such a shiny part. Two reasons, one, never had such a good lathe. And two, I've never tried to machine something quite so hardened. And in theory, this monstrous bearing should be a nice snug press into there. That fit is perfect too. That is by far the nicest press fit machine card that I've yet made. Turns out this chunk of pipe is the right size. Very nice. I've measured and between these two lines is where the sprocket goes to line up with the front sprocket. This inner diameter is less than this diameter, which is perfect because that means I can throw this back in the lathe and I'm gonna lop off all of this section here because I don't need that. Uh, it only needs to go to the outside edge of the sprocket. So I'll lop all of that off and then I'll machine this down to exactly this inner diameter so it's perfectly centered on there. Some weight reduction time. I'm gonna lop a bunch of pounds of steel off of this. Feel that weight reduction. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna get out the little scale and weigh this and then weigh it after I'm done machining it and find out how much weight I remove. Currently, seven pounds, 1.5 ounces. So we have a 3D printer now, a bamboo X1 carbon. So to mess around, I've been printing little tail pieces for my electric hydrofoil board. So that is PLA. Dang, that printer has a nice finish. And also our printer can print four materials in the same print. So I made a visual representation of Shrek House. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> Shrek is somehow way worse when he's like half Hulk. Yeah, he's yoked, man. I, I think he should probably live over here. Yeah, he could, he could live right there on top of him, on top of his own little... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. I thought that hole drilled through about that deep, which is about as much as I want it. So this part here is the strongest and I've got a nice little bevel here up to where the bearing surface needs to be. See how much weight I shaved off of this thing? Yeah, how much? Almost two pounds. Jeez. And I could go a lot more, but I have been on the lathe all day and I'm ready to do something else. my flange for the sprocket um, and I made it nice and snug press fit on there. I beveled both sides so I have a little bit of a pocket that way I can fill that with weld and then face it off so the sprocket sits there perfectly and then it'll still have some strength to it. They're coming for us. It's 
taking a bucket of water to a fire. Ah, this time it's on the other side of a couple of mountains. I'm not worried about it. You've really got some hours on the way with this one. Yeah, many, many hours. I think at this point it's more like days. Dang, that looks nice. Also, it turns out I'm gonna have to drill these holes completely by hand because there is no way to fit that on the mill. That's as far down as the mill goes and then with the drill bit, it just, yeah, it's too tall. I hear you came up with a solution. I did. I had to get very, very creative. This is probably the jankiest thing that's ever been set up on a lathe. But I've got two, like, kind of woodworking clamps holding this to this using a couple of these blocks to make sure that it's square. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot more perfect than me just drilling by hand. I mean, that's a solid half inch of threads. That will definitely hold. At long last, most of four days of machining and welding. Later, we have a new sprocket axle shaft assembly thing. It goes together so satisfying. It does. It's very, very satisfying. Look at that. So I need to make a few little um, spacers for this so that they can then weld in place because these ones are off by a little bit. And that's why the brake drags so much. You can see on this one right here, it's actually rubbing on the body of the caliper. Oh, it is. Not the pad because it's just, you can see on this side, there's a little bit of a gap. And on this side, there's not. <laughs> Like I said, I have to make a new chain tensioner. Luckily, I don't have to redesign it. I just have to cut the parts out and make it again. And just like that, new chain tensioner. Last step, hopefully, on the lathe here. And this time I'm putting a sleeve in the side of it so that it can actually roll. The other one was just kind of a slider. This one, it'll be able to roll on that. Now we got a roller. Time to put the wheel oh, back on. Look at how much rubber is caked on the inside. There's places wow. where it's like probably almost a quarter inch thick. That's a solid ball of rubber. I see you put the old chain back on. Well, I don't want to cut the new chain until I have a new sprocket and I've had an idea. It's probably a terrible idea, but it's an idea.
actually a lot of material. Yeah, we should weigh it. <laughs> so I already weighed the dust pan first. That's another two pounds of rubber. Jeez. If you count all the rubber that we lost in burnouts. <laughs> it in there, round up a little bit. 10 pounds of rubber has been removed from that tire. Would you like some rubber spaghetti? I've been thinking and I've been digging through my drawer of random timber sled parts and I'm going to add another shock onto the front of this. Basically, these ones have a little bit less damping force and they're, uh, softer. I'm gonna swap it out for two of these instead of one of these. And I can run these at a lower air pressure so I can have a similar spring rate in the front because I don't want it to be too stiff. But then I can get more damping force and mount this in the same place on this side and see how it looks and then take it for a drive and see how it feels. And if I don't like it or if it doesn't make any meaningful difference, then I'll just delete it. Found a bolt for this end. I'm just gonna mount just like this one. So uh, back to the lathe, make another part like that that can weld to the frame. All right, time to cut out uh, shock mount. Conveniently, I still have the file for it, so I just had to dig that up and cut it out. lop the corner of this off because this side of the swing arm is a little different. So nothing here is the final version, but just to get it together and test it, that'll do the trick. So we've got both shocks to the smaller, older style of timber sled shock. Unknown PSI in both of them, but. Yeah, I mean, that's massively stiffer. That seems pretty solid, actually. I like the look of the two shocks. I haven't decided yet. I don't dislike it, but I'm not sure that I like it any more than it was, than what it was before. The way I built it, the rear has less leverage on the shock than the front, or in other words, it has less potential travel. I don't think I really need to go dual rear shocks. I think I'll stick with one in the rear, at least for now, and certainly, before I test it, I'm gonna, I like to only change one major thing at a time when testing so that you know. You get better data that way. All right, so you know how I just said that I prefer to change one thing at a time before testing? Uh, well, I'm just gonna break that rule right now and I'm gonna add in the steering damper as well because I feel like uh, both things are gonna help but in different ways, so I should be able to tell the difference. Also, this one, if I want to test without it, I can always unbolt it, but anyway, um, so I just lopped off a corner of a failed bracket that has the right size hole for this. Right about like that. All right, so now I'm gonna make a bracket to mount this end. Cut out a bracket that basically follows this shape. Tap the holes in it so that uh, I can just have a couple bolts from the bottom straight up into that because there's not a lot of space to have like a nut on the back side of it or anything. Yeah, it should be fine. I mean, if I strip out the threads, I can always deal with that in the future, but 
I think it'll be close enough. I mean, it's a pretty small everything, and it's just a steering stabilizer. And those bolts are only sheer force. There's no force that's pulling down on them. So as long as I don't do a stupid and strip them out, we should be fine. Now I'm just got to tap it. Oh no, look at that. One, it fits. Two, even if it didn't, it has a torx in it. Which does still work, but I had the torch on that for a long time before it switched. I feel like that's, it was way hotter than it should have had to be. Well, I threw a fresh thermo switch in the radiator there. We'll see if that works, because that was a thing that failed. That's Sturgis, but it also could be a failure in design because the, the thermal switch is way up here at the top of the radiator. And if there's gonna be an air pocket anywhere, it'd be right there. So, I don't know, we'll find out when we test drive this thing shortly. to get a little more creative with my hexagon shape. There was a couple things I didn't really love about it. One, I wasn't a huge fan of the swoopies on the side, so I got rid of those and made it angular, so it's a combination of swoopy and angular. I think that just looks just, just all around cleaner and nicer. that done. Looks real nice. Um, you know, kind of irrelevant until we actually get this thing street legal, which could be a while. But, um, so now I'm going to do a new chain guard. Um, the old one got thoroughly yeeted when the chain uh, broke and swung off of there. And I was never super stoked on the way it looked anyway. So I have this piece of pipe that we got for the swing arm on the solo car. Um, and it is large enough diameter to be the front round section of the chain guide. Safety first. Put in the earplugs and cover your eyes. That just barely comes through that, doesn't it? Diameter wise. All right, now yonder to the lathe. Very nice, very nice. Hey, it fits perfectly over the camera lens. I think I will obviously add on to it this way. Um, the last time I did this, I just kind of hammered it flat, which was a huge pain. That goes on there. It's all cleaned up and pretty. It'll look like it was always one piece. And it'll go something like that. Now the 
prettiest weld, but it's all gonna get ground down anyway. As you can see, I uh, cut out another one of these and then just lopped the edge off because I wanted it to be asymmetrical because the bottom does not need a guard way back here, uh, but the top, it's useful. Plus it just looks cool. As usual, these hex sprockets are super inaccurate. I don't know why, but if you look at the teeth of them, or the, the points, the apexes of the, um, they're, they're not even close to consistent. Like, you can see where the bevel starts. On this side, it starts right at the apex of the hexagon. And then right here, it's got like a 16th of an inch. And then over here, it's even more. So um, what I did last time and what I'm gonna do this time is just take this, put it on a piece of hex shaft, put that piece of hex shaft in the lathe, and then turn down the other side to this diameter to make it right because it's just not close enough. Oh man, sometimes the right tool for the job is just the right tool for the job, if you know what I mean. problem there is a solution when you're a hoarder seeing as how it takes a while to get to town in the store I'm just gonna take this one and turn it down to fit inside of this sprocket I have it in the lathe um, as usual for welding round parts like this, but also I have um, a couple of things here that are flat and true, <laughs> pushing on it just so it's got a little bit of tension to keep, you know, help it, help it not warp when I get the first couple welds on there. So, always, always good to have a little bit of that. Man, it's windy out there. Welding something while it's rather snug on a, another piece of metal it tends to get a little sticky thereafter. Thereafter, ridiculous. I've never found out exactly what it is because I never measured it, but there is a point at which pumping a jack handle faster actually reduces its effectiveness because the fluid doesn't have time to flow into the cylinder that it's being pumped out of. So. There is a frequency of maximum effectiveness. Come on. Stay that there. Nice. Third time's the charm, that's what they say. Oh, man. Oh. Nice. I've also done a very abnormal thing. I've bought brand new bolts. 
I didn't have five that really matched for this, so I just ordered some. Shoo! That looks nice. Right, now to finish the chain guard. Yeah, that's still got enough clearance. When all else fails, if you're wondering if your part's designed correctly, you can just zoom in to just the right size and then hold your other part up to the screen. Look at that. It fits perfectly. It's still August. I had to put on a hoodie. It's kind of chilly today. If I just put a slot in the plate, then the whole thing can just lift right off. That didn't occur to me either. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it works great on this part. That just slips right on there. See, those are because this is set back from this edge. So now, um, I can remember how this fits on here. See, perfect fit. Long last, I have the last piece of the chain guard designed. More beef and much prettier as well. It's always a good day when you can make something beefier and sexier at the same time. Dug out one of the cutouts from right here and welded it right there as a little spacer for that section. All right, go ahead and finish welding it and then I can just bolt it on and then it'll be ready for a test drive. Ready for a test drive, Einstein? Ready for a test drive? <laughs> He's afraid of pretty much everything, so. Last night when I was in here, he was sitting here and he noticed his reflection in the door and was like scared of it himself. I think somebody found their reflection. Anyway, uh, time for, uh, time to test all the new things and see how they worked. Right, Einstein? Time to test all the shocks and the shave down retire and the new chain system and, uh, I also found the old uh, hand guards from this KTM and bolted them up. And we've got the steering damper all hooked up and working. So it'll be interesting to see how that does. Um, I don't think I'll really be able to feel it most of the time. Uh, but what made me think of putting it on there is when, um, when I hit top speed last time, uh, around 70 miles an hour, roughly, it wasn't just hopping straight up and down, like up till the top speed, uh, which now our top speed is theoretically much higher. Until that point, it was just kind of bouncing straight up and down. But for some reason, when it got up to top speed, it started, the front started doing this as well, wobbling side to side. No idea why, uh, but I thought a steering damper might help a lot with that. 
Most of the time you won't feel it, which is exactly how steering dampers are supposed to be. So anyway, let's go test it all out. Oh man, so much better. The front tire still likes to hop, uh, but I also didn't shave it down like I did the rear. So it may be a balance issue, and I still wanna try putting balancing beads in it, but when it does start to hop, it's totally controllable now. It doesn't feel like I'm gonna die. It's just kinda hopping. It doesn't wibble wobble all over the place and be scary. So yeah, so much better. The gearing's better too. Um, like, I don't know what gear I was in there, maybe third or fourth instead of like sixth just to cruise. Yeah, and also the hop is at very specific speeds. Like above and below, I don't have a speedometer, but whatever that speed is above and below that, it's fine. It's just at certain speeds it hops. So it's definitely just a tire balance issue. It's not even related to bumps. And I haven't felt the rear hopping at all. It also smells like your tire isn't rubbing like it used yeah, to. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, certainly not much. So that's, that's a win as well.
definitely look really comfortable there. Oh yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to ride. I, I haven't, well, I don't know yet because we've only been on dirt for most of this. Um, but you may have noticed at certain speeds it starts doing this. Yeah, and the back hobbles too after a pothole sometimes oh, at certain does it? speeds. Yeah. I mean, the pothole that makes sense, it bounce, it, it's just a giant tire. Um, yeah, so I haven't yet figured out why it's doing that, but I think it's mainly a thing that it's going to do on dirt where it's loose. Yeah. It's, it has surprisingly little traction, to be honest. Like, it'll break the rear tire loose in like third gear on this on this gravel. Like, you'd think giant truck tires made for off-road, good grip on the gravel. They're at like five PSI, right? No. It's, it's, there's just so much torque. It'll just zap! <laughs> Like coming out of that last corner, I was drifting a little bit, as I'm sure you saw. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. What is that? <laughs> we call it the monster chopper. Dude. Yeah. That thing like bob like. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm coming up, and all you can see from up there is just the front tire. Yeah. And I was gonna joke with you guys, because I'm like, wow, that's so random. This big ass tire sitting here <laughs> on that truck. And I was gonna joke that hey, that ain't gonna fit on the Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I'm coming up and I'm like, no, there's more than just a tire. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a whole bike. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that nifty? Oh, <laughs> they're 46s. Yeah. They're, you guys just like have nothing better to do? No, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we have a YouTube channel, all. so that's oh, what yeah. we, yeah, we just build weird, weird Dude, stuff. It's, for, no, it's cool yeah. though. Nice. I mean, yeah, no, it, it rips. Look at this freaking. <laughs> yeah, on, uh, on this dirt here, even on the like hard pack stuff where there's more traction, it'll it'll spin the tire all the way through third gear. So really, <laughs> you'd, you'd think it would be slow, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> what kind of motor is that? KTM 1190. Oh, that's a good size. Adventure yeah. bike, yeah. Oh, go for it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this thing's yeah. sick, dude. Thank you. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. As far as I know, there's never, never. been anything like that, so. <laughs> no, I didn't, so I was telling them, because that's what I'm coming down. All, you All I can see is the tire. tire. Yeah. And I was, I was like, gonna, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, car. that's so random. And then you keep coming, you're like, no, there's, there's like a <laughs> bike on this thing. Yep. Yeah, you would think you'd run it a couple stages. Yeah. yeah, right. I was like, where are they, where are they going? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's cool. No, that's yeah. legit, I mean. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a creation. Where'd you get those tires? Uh, they're for like a big, Truck, like mud truck type type thing. Yeah, I shaved like seven or eight pounds of rubber off the entire just getting into it. Yeah. <laughs> so what gave you the idea to do it? Uh well I mean like I said we have we do YouTube so I'm always and I build weird stuff. Uh so I'm always thinking of the next weird thing but we had these tires laying around from a previous project um that didn't really go anywhere and so uh one day I just kind of looked at it and thought you know, that'd make a really cool looking motorcycle. I don't know if it, like from the beginning, I had no idea if it was gonna be possible to ride. I just was, you know, it was an experiment. Uh, but it turns out it's quite rideable. Is it hard to balance it? Uh, no, not at all. Um, actually, I can balance it sitting still. Like <laughs> neither foot is touching the ground right now. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> um, okay, but when you're moving. But yeah, no, when you're moving, it's not hard to balance. It's just like, have you ridden bikes on the street and stuff or yeah, at a, a yeah, little bit? Yeah. Well, but yeah. So, you know, a normal bike, you can, you know, you can go from turning left to right really quickly. You can mm -hmm. go back yeah. and forth. This, this one just has like a little bit of a delay. Yeah. Like it, it's there's a lot just of tire to move. Yeah. There's so much inertia in that tire when it's spinning it, you know, 40, yeah. 50 miles an hour. Like you have to just oh, yank yeah. on the bars to get it to go the other yeah, direction. You gotta be paying attention. Yeah. And plan ahead. Plan exactly. Ahead yeah. Curve, yeah. It's not a, uh, nimble machine you don't, you don't but race with it, no. yeah no <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ain't gonna be avoiding dodging around a crash no no uh, just, yeah. just avoid that situation altogether yeah. is the plan yeah. Yeah. cool guys all right well, well, awesome. really cool. I, saw, I had to stop yeah like, appreciate this, it this is cool you just don't see this nope <laughs> yeah no <laughs> all right guys go cool. well, cool. enjoy all right What's yeah your YouTube channel? grind hard plumbing grind hard plumbing all right yep I'm yep gonna, i might try to look that up so. all right cool all right, guys. Hey. Yeah. nice to meet you, you guys. yeah turning heads wherever we go. <laughs> exactly yeah. oh you dropped your glove right there don't look oh closer. thanks <laughs> thank you have a good one yeah you see you later Two states up your road, man? Well, that's not my road, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> what are they doing here? I don't know. Two states. Like, what are they doing? I know. Because, like, if it was, like, sheriff or something, it'd be like, yeah, okay, they're going to, like, something up. 
what could State Patrol possibly be doing out <laughs> here? That's literally a dead end road. Yeah, but I. <laughs> yeah, it's literally dead end road in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is even more in the middle of nowhere than your house. Right, like my house is only like half a mile from pavement. We're like five miles from pavement in any direction. <laughs> yeah. What are they doing? I don't know, they were super nice, that was awesome. Yeah. When they pulled over, I was like, I mean, it's a state patrol. They definitely aren't here because someone called them, but like, are they gonna be upset about this? Nah, they just thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. They looked at the lack of license. <laughs> Just they noticed, but they yeah. didn't care one bit. No. I mean, why would they? Like, we're out on a dirt road. No. We're not hurting anybody. All three of them got a picture. Yeah. You know? Yep. They loved it. That's awesome. <laughs> Was not expecting that. <laughs> Maybe we should That's call hilarious. it a win for the day and roll home. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's crazy how, how much power this thing has and how little traction. Mm -hmm. I would not have expected it to be able to do a burnout, a rolling burnout at like 40 miles an hour in third gear. <laughs> yeah, I like how you told the officers that as <laughs> Yeah, well. I mean, what are they gonna do? <laughs> We're on a dirt road, I mean, What's everybody breaks traction. Should I uh, send Steven this picture? He's out hiking right now and just not give him any context. <laughs> Yes, that would be hilarious. <laughs> it's just so premium. Oh, so funny. Also, is, I knew we were going to get some good pictures today, but I didn't know we were going to get one that good.
actual death wobble situation. <laughs> yeah, I haven't figured out what that wobble is, like what causes that yet. I really... There's a certain speed where your tire just changes shape entirely. Yeah, I think next time I'm gonna run higher pressure and try that, because I haven't... Oh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> it's just dripping a little oil. It's the valve yeah. cover gaskets, they both leak. I have new ones, I just haven't taken the engine out yet, so. What's crazy is during your wobble, you were straight snaking, but it, for some reason, it didn't look sketchy. It's not like comforting, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna kill you right away. <laughs> Me just being in a normal truck, seeing this on the road in front of me. Yeah, I bet that's weird. <laughs> like, when it's legal and you're just driving it around, you are gonna blow I'm probably gonna minds. cause accidents. <laughs> yeah.